Hello and welcome to this Vantage Measurement Systems CMM Manager video training. I'm Ryan. In this video we're going to talk about uh, measuring wall thicknesses in CMM Manager. Uh, that's an easy enough thing to do when your wall thicknesses are square to the coordinate system. However, sometimes we have features like this curved wall thickness down below where the surfaces are nominally parallel but they're not square to the coordinate system so it's hard to figure out the distance um, from one side to the other. So SEMA Manager gives us some tools that we can use so let's cover those. Uh, let's get started. So first of all you can see on the right side of the screen I've already begun the program so we're not going to worry about the alignment or any of the header stuff that's fine and the part is oriented on the machine table we're offline we can see the probe is yellow so that's all good. So now let's do something that we is a little bit unusual. We're going to leave teach mode. So we're going to press teach mode off just sort of as a matter of convenience so we don't write any of the stuff we're about to do into our program because it doesn't need to be in our program. So the first thing we're going to do is come to the feature tab of the ribbon and pick and define a point. Now this point is a point that we are ultimately going to measure as one of our thickness points. So the first thing we're going to measure is the thickness of this back wall. So this first point is point 1. So I'll say OK. And I need to add this into the CAD so that I can have access to it from when I go back into teach mode. So to do that, what I want to do is highlight point 1 in the feature database window, right click and add to CAD. In this case, the actual and nominals are the same, so we can click OK. Then I'll come to point 1 right click and delete the point one. I don't need the point anymore because now I've added it to the CAD model so I have I can always get it back. By doing pick and define point, SEMA Manager will actually snap to that point now. Okay, so now that I've got one point of my two, I need a point that is uh, diametrically opposed on the other side. Um, so, so, so to get that uh, we need to do this. We'll go to the display tab of the ribbon to the cloud editor and there's one cloud right now that contains the point that we just created. Well I don't want to move this point to the other surface because then I won't have a point on the first surface. So the first thing we need to do is cloud one is is the current active cloud so what I'll do is I'll say new and I prefer to call this new cloud 1A because it will be a copy of Cloud 1. When I say OK, you can see Cloud 1A is currently the active one, but it contains exactly a point at the same location as Cloud 1. If I go back and forth, they both contain a point at the same place. So whenever you click New Cloud, it automatically copies whatever the highlighted cloud was that you started with which in this case works out to be very handy for us because now all we need to do is select the point we want to move and we'll translate it. Now this wall thickness I know is, uh, I've already interrogated the model, it's a quarter inch. So I'll say I want to translate negative quarter inch and say OK. And if I rotate the model around I can see there's a point over there. Let me close the cloud editor so there's my two points. They're exactly on the opposite side of the part from each other. If I look at this part from the back it looks like there's only one point because they're um, they're in the same spot. Actually, if I was looking through the model, there's actually two points there. But looking at it from the back, you can't see that because they're exactly opposite one another. So there's the first set of points that I want. So now I can come back to Teach Mode. Let's move the cursor. And I'll come to Features, and I'll measure a point and I'll highlight the first point. Notice SEMA Manager snaps to that point. So if I click if I click close to that point it snaps right up to it. And I'll say OK. And now I'll tell SEMA Manager I want to measure the other side so now I can snap to the other side. Oh, there's one step that I forgot. So if I go to current tip and local path and create a path, SEMA Manager is trying to create a path that drives through the part. The reason for that is when I copied the first point into the second point, the second point has the same outward vector as the first one, 
which means it's pointing inside of the part right now. So we need to fix that. So let's leave Teach Mode again. We'll come back to the Display tab of the ribbon, back to the Cloud Editor. Now, luckily, SEMA Manager gives us an awesome tool that deals with this right away. We'll highlight Cloud 1A, I'll select this point, and I will drop to CAD. And what I can do is Auto Project, so we don't have to type in vectors, and I'll say OK. Now I'll close this and go back to Teach Mode, back to Features, and me measure a point. And now SEMA Manager is going to see that the outward vector of the point is going in the opposite direction. So in other words, when I told SEMA Manager to drop that point, that CAD point, to the CAD surface that was closest to it, SEMA Manager also associated the vector of that surface to the point at that location on the surface. So, so it did two things at once. So we'll call this point two. Apply and say OK. So there's point one and point two. Let's go ahead and ask for the distance between the two and make sure that they're actually 250. So I'll click those two. I can preview and see that the nominals and actuals are 250. So that's good. So that's our first set of points. So let's do this one more time with the contoured surface. So let's just pick We'll go to Features, Pick and Define Point, and we'll choose a point right over here. OK, so now I'll select Point 3 from my Feature Database window and Add to CAD. And I can delete Point 3 again, I don't need it. So now, how thick is this wall of the contour? Well, I don't know exactly what it is, but we can come pretty close. Let's do a pick and define 2D, and we'll pick this edge right here. We could get a little bit more precise, but that's fine. A uh, hundred thou. So that's pretty good. So let's cancel this. So now I'll go to the Display tab of the ribbon, Cloud Editor. Let's highlight Cloud 2, and we'll create a new cloud. Remember, we're going to copy Cloud 2, so we'll say this is 2A. We'll highlight the new, the copied point 3, and we'll translate it by negative point 1. So the idea here is you want to be really close in your translation. We can see there's a point. If we look at this from the top, I can see that that point didn't land right on the surface. It landed away from the surface. So this is where the drop to CAD is, or another place where it's useful. So the idea is when you do this translate, you want to come really close to where your point's ultimately going to be, right? Because if you if you translate it too far, it's going to associate possibly to a different location on the curve on the other side. So that's not good. So you want to come real close, then drop to CAD, auto project, and say OK. And now we'll close this. Let's turn on the surfaces again. So there's our two two points. So let's go back to teach mode. And let's go ahead to Features, measure a point. We'll measure the first point, point 3. We'll spin around and come measure the second point. We'll call this point 4. Now let's go ahead and ask for the distance. So we'll report the distance between those two points and preview, 824. There we go. So now I can say OK and close. Now, the, don't expect that to be an exact number. This part, I made this part specifically for our example here, so I'm not sure what the value is supposed to be. So it, it's not a real part that you would expect to be 0, 0,750 or something like that. 824 is a, is a reasonable number. So anyhow, that's how you do it. Um, most parts in aerospace uh, you'll end up doing this a bunch of times. I do this sometimes. Um, sometimes I'm looking for ten parts in a pro, ten thicknesses in a program. Sometimes I'm looking for thirty different thicknesses, and I end up doing this a bunch of times. Um, so anyway, once you do it a few times, you get used to the button clicks, and it becomes really super easy. So anyhow, that's that. Um, so I hope this was helpful for you. Otherwise, uh, again, I'm Ryan. So good luck and happy programming.